Alright guys, this is another quick tip. This time it's a little bit about organization in Premiere Pro or any other NLE that is capable of that little trick I show you in a minute. Uh, I started working that way in like 2007. Uh, the new Final Cut Studio came out and there was a uh, Apple Pro site where there was a profile about Zodiac and David Fincher and how Angus Wall is cutting that and FCP. This is a screenshot of that. It's not on the website anymore, of course, because there's no FCP7 anymore. And you can see here that guy uses like two timelines and that's really interesting. You have um, all your selects or your scenes and uh, built a master timeline underneath or the other way around um, and yeah so that that is really really nice and uh, I started using that method seeing it on that profile video and I really liked it and yeah that's kind of nice Premiere can actually work that way as well even a little bit better than FCP um, because switching between the timelines and what is shown on your preview monitor and stuff like that and what you can do it is really nice in Premiere Pro and then back in February this year there was this guy really a nice editor and he came up with a name for it and he called it pancake timeline and I like that and um, back then I really rediscovered that way and it's really nice I put a link to his blog about editing music videos and how he uses all kinds of different setups and things in Adobe Premiere and it's really nice um, I like that guy he is really good and yeah the pancake edit and I actually have a preset in my Premiere workspaces that is called pancake timeline here we go. I go to my Premiere. Um, it's a little bit chaotic. <laughs> I talk a little bit about that. Here we go. I have my Pancake Edit workspace. Uh, really nice. Usually what I do is uh, go to my um, footage and make selects. It's really essential for me to um, see what uh, footage is usable and stuff like that. And usually I have uh, go from top these are important shots I really have to use or I should use or look at it and it goes up and down and then usually I have like little blocks of um, yeah what happened in time or essential shots that have to be together in a way uh, for example here I have all the uh, on the side finish line um, here I have like the winner gets his badge and what else here I have like a, a drumming combo playing uh, for the runners um, and I have that and these little snippets and these little box of editing uh, stuff um, um, also here just running here I have um, finish line at the end uh, people crowd stuff like that and so I select my selects and arrange it that way and um, here's the final edit and yeah I work with that in a way that I just go in my pancake timeline on the top and go to my well yeah I really should use that uh, shot uh, because these are the sponsors they have to be in there and sponsors of that run not of me <laughs> just to be clear and then yeah well two ways to get things into the real master timeline as i call it well the more cool way maybe it's just drag and drop it bam boom done and yeah of course it has to auto save still a good idea to have that going on i lost one project lately well Anyway, 
yeah, and so I just go in and, well, I go just random now. I just put it in here. I even could go in and um, make a edit. Boom, there you go. But then again, you could go the more traditional Avid way. Double click on the actual shot, pre-select your in out, and then, well, hit F10, F9, whatever your uh, key is set to, and boom, there it is. But then again, you have to really select your timelines, double click, place your play hat, and then F10. Yeah, that, that works out quite nicely as well. Um, and if you're more like a JKL edit guy, um, or with keys, yeah, that, that works nicely. But then again, you always have to make sure you are in the right timeline. Um, so yeah, I kind of like the track and drop approach a little bit more. Sometimes, depending on, uh, yeah, what's what's the goal in my edit, I go with both. So that's actually it. That's it uh, in a simple way how you can work with pancake timelines, make your selects. Um, some people uh, working more on uh, fictional stuff, on stories, might be good with going or having uh, each scene in one timeline so you can build your uh, pre-edit, so to speak, and then work from those in your master timeline. That's it basically for now, for this little requested uh, tutorial or quick tip. And um, yeah, check out my blog and see you and hear you soon.